Okay, and now I'm just going to keep doing a bunch of example problems, so feel free to pause and then come back to this to check your answer. A 237 gram piece of molybdenum with a specific heat of 0.29 joules per gram degree Celsius is dropped into 244 grams of water at 10 degrees Celsius. When the system comes to thermal equilibrium, which means they have the same temperature, the temperature is 15.3 degrees Celsius. What was the initial temperature of the metal? It's the exact same problem we did just did. Okay, solve for the Q of the water first. I know my water is 244 grams. I know the specific heat of water is 4.184. And I know the change of temperature is final, 15.3, minus initial, 10. Two hundred forty-four times four point one eight four times uh, five point three, because fifteen point three minus ten is five point three, is fifty-four ten point seven five. Again, the Q of my molybdenum, negative Q of my molybdenum, is equal to the negative Q of the H two O. So negative 5410.75 is equal to the mass of the aluminum of molybdenum times its specific heat times its change in temperature. So delta T divided by the pr oops divided by the product of 237 times 0.29 is negative 78.7. Big drop in temperature. Okay, so delta T is equal to T final minus T initial. Negative 78.7 is equal to the final temperature, 15.3. Because again, it says equilibrium, so it's the same. Minus the T initial. So if I take my 15.3 plus negative 1 times the second answer is 94.0. So my initial temperature is 94.0 degrees Celsius. Okay, big drop in temperature. But there's a lot of molybdenum and a lot of water that it had to heat up in the process. So you see the water didn't really gain that much heat. Okay, a 10.25 gram sample of a metal alloy is heated to 99.10 degrees Celsius and is then dropped into 20 grams of water. Okay, so this thing is going to release heat. The water's temperature rises from 18.551 degrees Celsius to 22.03. Calculate the specific heat of the alloy. Okay, this is a little bit easier because you don't have to do the extra step of the final minus the initial. Because you're going to do that earlier. Same process. The Q of my metal is equal to the Q of the water, but opposite in sign. Since my metal is giving up heat, is exothermic, so its Q is going to be negative. So I'm going to calculate the Q of the water first because it wants information about the metal. My water has a mass of 20 grams. 4.184 joules, and its temperature change is 22.03 minus 18.51, and now I solve for the Q of the metal. Eighteen point five one because it's always final minus initial is two ninety four point five five. And again, sig figs are not super important here until the very final answer. I'm just going to keep using the same uh, answer from the calculator as I move on. Switch the sign. Two ninety four point five five is equal to my mass ten point two five times the specific heat, which is what I'm solving for, times the change in temperature. Now, they both have the same final temperature, but initially it was 99.1. Switch the sign times negative 1 
and divide it by the product of everything on the right hand side. 10.25 times 22.03 minus 99.1. Again, parentheses are your friend. Learn how to use them properly. And you get 0.373. Now remember, specific heat has a funky unit. Joules per gram degrees Celsius is the specific heat. Okay. Same problem, different numbers. Okay, so again, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Always remembering this fact right here. Q of the metal is equal to the opposite sine Q of the water. So my metal is very hot. My water is cool. So it is going to be exothermic. So I do my Q equals MC dot T. Always write my formula. My Q of the water is going to be 28.0 grams times the specific heat times the change in temperature, which is 21.23 minus 19.73. And the Q of my water is, plug it into my handy dandy calculator, 28 times 4.184 times 21.23 minus 19.73 is 175.728. or 178. Forgetful. 728. Not even close. 728 joules. Switch the sign based on that fact right there. So negative 175.728 is equal to the mass 2.05. Oops. Times the specific heat, which is what I'm calculating for, because it says it right there. Times the change of temperature. Again, they have the same final temperature. It started at 98.88. This is a serious drop in temperature. So I should get, hopefully, a tiny specific heat. Multiply that number by negative 1 to switch the sign, and then divide by everything on the right-hand side. 2.05 times 21.23 minus 98.88. Close two parentheses, and I get 1.10 joules per gram degree Celsius. Again, these problems aren't very difficult. It's a matter of getting everything in the right spot. Okay. A piece of stainless steel there's a specific heat, is taken from an oven at 178 degrees Celsius, really hot steel, and is immersed in 225 milliliters of water at 25.9 degrees Celsius. The water's temperature rises to 42.4 degrees Celsius. What is the mass of the piece of steel? Okay, so the process doesn't change. I still remember that the Q of the metal, it's exothermic because it's much hotter than the water. That's going to be the case right there. Let's solve for my water. First. Now, remember that one milliliter of water is equal to one gram. But this is for water only. Okay. So, 225 grams times its specific heat times its change in temperature. It ends at 42.4. It started at 25.9. They both end at the same temperature. Two hundred twenty five times four point one eight four, the specific heat of water, times the change in temperature, which is forty two point four minus twenty five point nine is one uh, fifteen five three three point one. So, again, we go back to this fact right here. So, I flip the sign. 15533.1 is equal to my mass of my steel, which is... Oh, what I'm looking for. Silly. Times the specific heat, which is 0 0.50, times the temperature change. It ends at the same temperature. It started at 178.
flip the sign by multiplying by negative 1, and then divide by everything on the right-hand side. 0.5 times 42.4 minus 178. Again, parentheses are your friend. And I get 229.1. So 229 grams is the mass of that piece of steel. Big piece of steel, 229 grams. Okay, but decent size amount of water too, 225 milliliters of water. Okay, last one. A 14.5 gram piece of silver originally at 20 degrees Celsius is heated until it is 80 degrees Celsius. If the specific heat of aluminum is 1.22 grams of joules per gram degree Celsius, how much heat did the metal gain? Okay, this one's a lot easier. This one's very simple. This is just a straight up, no, no transfer, no water, nothing. Uh, Q equals MC delta T. My metal is 14.5 grams. Its specific heat is 1.22. And its temperature change is 80 minus 20. And so the heat that it must have gained would be 14.5 times 1.22 times 60, which is the difference of 80 minus 20, is 1,061.4. Joules. Okay, so notice that in these problems, they're not hard. The math is not complicated, but you have to practice, 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 practice. And that's why I did so many example problems here, because I really want you to go over these problems over and over again until you feel like you can't do another one because they're so simple to you. Okay, and that's how we do Q equals MC delta T problems. In the next podcast, we'll start talking about actual chemical reactions that are occurring and heat that's transferred in those chemical reactions.